<laughs> if you like the video make sure to like, subscribe, and comment. For more videos like this. What are your creepy, unexplainable, or just weird things that have occurred in your life? One day I was home from school from some kind of abdominal pains. I went up to lay in bed and I felt something heavy just drop on the sheets between my legs. I looked, nothing there. Nothing was on the ceiling that could have dropped either. My mom used to have nights where she'd wake up in pitch blackness, there was always a street light shining through the window and feel like someone was on top of her choking her too. That house was weird. Last year, my family went camping at the same park we go to every year. Usually, we also get the same site which is close to the bathroom and showers. This year, we booked a bit late and we were placed way out in the back of the park which is a fairly secluded area surrounded by woods. It was a nice change, but a bit of a hassle, lots of walking to go fishing, go to the bathroom, etc. The first night we were there, my nephew woke up in the middle of the night, woke up my sister, and told her there was someone outside the tent. She said something then leaned up on the tent, he got scared and pushed back. She got outside, and there was nothing to be seen. We just dismissed it as a trash panda, even though my sister didn't think that was it. The second night, we had a few friends over. They brought their dog who is the most well-behaved dog I have ever met both with humans and other animals. We were all sitting around the fire when the dog started barking like crazy, she was tied to a picnic table sort of away from the fire slash people. This was a super rare occurrence, so the owner got up to see what was going on. When he took the leash off the table, she went crazy and pulled him toward the forest, she actually pulled him a good 10 feet, he obviously wasn't expecting her to do that, she has never acted that way before. I decided to grab a flashlight and check out the forest in the direction she was pulling. There was nothing. She has seen squirrels, raccoons, cats, etc. and never had she acted this way. Everyone took note of how odd that was, but again we just dismissed it as nothing, it did spark up a conversation about the thing outside the tent from the previous night though. The third and final night we were there, we could see a storm coming in. The sky was lighting up, the thunder was loud, and the wind was crazy, obviously unrelated to the eerie events, but relevant to the story. We spent a good hour setting up tarps, covering the chairs, etc. Everyone crawling into their tents for the night, knowing that the storm was going to hit any second. I was the last to get in because I had to pee. I was at the edge of the site, facing the forest, pissing in the wind. The storm and the forest were spooky enough, but what happened next will forever be burned in my memory. From the forest, I hear the sound of a little girl singing. Not like a fast-paced pop song, but a song with the tempo of a nursery rhyme. I couldn't make out any words, but I was certain I was hearing the voice of a small girl. There were no other voices. I pushed that pee out faster than a laser. The second I finished, I turned toward my tent, a loud bang of thunder sounded, and I jumped into my tent just as it started to rain. My heart was pounding. I was sweaty and possibly a bit covered in pee, didn't get to shake the last drop. In the morning I told my family, I feel like really no one believed me, but it happened and it was terrifying. About 14 years ago, I was driving through Texas on my way to Denver in a car I had loaded up with my possessions. At around 1 AM somewhere just north of Amarillo, my car started to overheat and I pulled into the only gas station remotely close. It was also closed but I thought I'd bide some time and limp my car somewhere down the road. Other than this gas station, there was nothing and no one for as far as I could tell. No cars on the highway. It was just really dark out with the lights all turned off, and really quiet. After a while, the headlights of a car appeared and as it came by it slowed down and pulled into the station. The driver was a young guy, blonde hair. He rolled down his window and without looking directly at me, he asked if I needed help, or even a ride. Right away I had a really eerie feeling. Also, the solitude didn't help. I was really polite and told him I was cool. My car had a problem but I had something figured out and I'd be fine. The kid said, sounds good take it easy and drove off while still not making eye contact. My car was still really hot, so I continued to wait it out. After a while the guy came back and asked me again. I gave him a little more detail about my plan because I didn't want him thinking I was trying to mess with the station, just buying time and I'd be on my way. Again, no eye contact and he pulled away. After about another 20 minutes or so, and just as I was gonna get ready to move on, the kid drives back in. This time he asked me again if I needed help, but after I said thanks but no thanks, I noticed he was really getting agitated. Also, at this point the kid turned towards me. I could see this guy had no iris or pupils. His eyes were both solid white. Also, I had this sense of dread, fear that I can't say I've ever felt in my life. At the same time he turned to me too, 
he was in the middle of telling me I deserved this for driving a Japanese car, and that I was some kind of asshole for not letting him help me. At this point, I got in my car and noped out of there. He followed me for a bit out of the station, but turned around after about a mile. I was driving home from work. It wasn't a particularly back road type road, but not a highway either. Just a normal suburban road. Out of nowhere, a little girl runs into the road, looking like she is chasing something. She is dressed in a dress with one of those fake little aprons on it, sort of like something a little girl from the 50s or 60s would wear, judging from pics of my mom. She stops in the middle of the road and looks at my car and just vanishes. I had been about to break for her, it happened that fast. I drive that road every night for the rest of the year I live there, and never saw her again. Still weirds me out though. Not the craziest thing compared to other things in this thread but here goes. When I was about 18 I was living with my cousins in Maine. They have a Great Dane, and I am familiar with the neighboring dogs. One night I was in the pool area smoking a cigarette. The pool area is surrounded by a fence about 6 to 7 feet high. It was dark but there was an outside light on. So I hear a clattering like paws on the fence. I look over, I am about 15 to 20 feet from the fence, and something that looks sort of like the head of a deer has poked its head over the fence. Since it was dark I assumed it was Jimmy, their Great Dane and the only dog in the area capable of seeing over the fence. So I just say hey, Jim. Then I look in through the French doors and see Jimmy sleeping on the floor. Not really freaked out but I turn back to look at this thing whatever it was and I can't quite make out what it is in the dark. There are coyotes in the area but they wouldn't be tall enough to see over this fence and whatever it was had a full head above the fence line. Like I said it sort of looked like a doe, no antlers, but it would be very unusual for a deer to act like this. So I have no idea what it is so without really thinking I yell bow. Go away to it. It hesitates for a second, still staring directly at me, and calmly lowers itself off the fence. This is also inconsistent with how a deer would behave as they're quite skittish. I go to the garage and cautiously open the outside door and peek out to the lawn area where this thing would have been and of course nothing. So like I said maybe not the most crazy thing but I still have no idea what it was I saw. I was hanging around with some friends around a fire in an open area of a small forest near a beach. Lots of my friends were getting drunk or high but I avoided it, I disliked the taste of the beer they were drinking and I also didn't want to smoke it. At around 11.30, I had to go home and my friend went with me. We were all alone and started walking down a path out of the woods and it was pitch black, only the lights of our cell phones were used to help guide us. At one point my friend said hold it, stop. Turn out your light. And I did. I could faintly see his own outline right next to me and he was pointing to somewhere in the woods off the path. The moon came out behind the cloud and I could see what he was pointing at. There was a man standing next to a tree, defined head and shoulders and torso. I thought he was taking a piss but it felt odd and I was ready to get out of there. My friend shined his cell phone in that direction but the light wasn't exactly far enough to see but I swear it looked like the guy was facing us, staring. My friend whispered alright, let's back off, come on. And suddenly there was the snap of a branch and this guy was charging towards us through the foliage and tree branches. We sprinted as fast as we could and didn't look back. My friend later noted when we got back to my house he thought the dude looked like he had no legs and was sort of floating through the, the air straight for us. I didn't get a good enough look, I just saw him jolt towards us fast and moving quick. I was roughly 10 when this happened. My brother and I shared a room together and I woke up pretty early one morning, the sun wasn't up yet. I looked around the room and saw the shelf that had a basket with a sweater on top of it. I thought to myself um, Kinda looks like someone is standing there. I knew it was just a basket and sweater because I saw them before I went to sleep. Then this figure moved closer to the side of my bed. It didn't move with smooth transitions, it seemed to almost teleport in a way. It made four total movements to get to the side of my bed, making no noise in the process. I got very scared and hid under my blankets and waited for about a minute or so. I lifted a part of my blanket to peek out and see if it was still there, and it was. It seemed hunched over, as if it was peeking back at me. I got even more frightened and hid under my blankets for a few more minutes. I peeked one more time and it was gone. All I could see was the door and wall. I slowly removed myself from underneath my blanket and began turning my head to survey the room and saw it, on the other side of my bed, except it was closer to my brother's bed than mine, it seemed like it was looking at him now. Still terrified, I hid under my blankets until the sun came up. I have not even the slightest clue what I saw that morning. A little late to the party, but here is my story. This happened a few months ago, and it was at the time very cold where I live. 
This caused me to have the heater on a very high setting in order to not freeze. I was laying in bed, half asleep, and I felt someone sit down on the bed beside me. I figured it was a friend or sibling of mine, playing a practical joke. I look up to see a jet black figure sitting at the foot of my bed. This figure had no facial features of any sort. It was just a vaguely humanoid black shape. I still thought that this was some kind of sick joke, so I slowly turned the lights on. This didn't change anything. The black shape was still there, with no change to the color. It was as if it was sucking the light out of the room. I reached out to touch the strange being, and it did not react in the slightest until my hand was mere inches from what would be the face, at which point the shape began to flinch away. As I made contact with the being, my hand was consumed with the coldest sensation I have ever experienced. It felt like my hand was in liquid nitrogen. The creature emitted a shrill sound like a broken violin, and then vanished. The strangest thing about this incident was that I wasn't the only one who experienced it. A neighbor told me that she had experienced the same thing at a similar time, and the shrieking sound that the creature made was heard by other people nearby. I was the only one who touched the creature, but other victims reported that their shadow people vanished just after the loud shriek. As of yet, the shadow people have yet to make another appearance. About two years ago I was driving with my cousin on a paved road along the northern coast of Colombia, it was early in the evening and we were listening to music while chatting. On our right was the Caribbean Sea about 100 feet from us, on our left there were miles and miles of jungle and swamps. Suddenly, out of nowhere, a dog-like creature jumps in the middle of the road, I slam the brakes but I still manage to hit it. As I'm about to get out of the car my cousin grabs my arm very hard and tells me to look at what's in front of us. The thing I had just hit gets up, says Hydroeputa, son of a bitch in Spanish, stands on its two feet and sprints to the jungle. The creature looked like a large border collie and had a fanny pack strapped to its abdomen. I drove way above the speed limit until we got to the next toll booth. A lot of people have told me it might have been a witch. To this day my cousin and I have no clue what the hell we hit. There's always been this one thing that always sat in the back of my head. When I was about 8 to 10, can't remember really, but, we were visiting my grandparents who lived about an hour away. After the visit, it's dark out now, we get in the car and start to head home and I just start looking off toward the distance and see a tower that's still flashing bright. Really bright. I thought this is normal, until it seemed to follow along with us, directly across a couple miles away. I kept watching and it seemed to grow in brightness. I mentioned this to my parents, they disregard it. 20 minutes in, we hit a wooded area and I calm down, feeling safer now that I can't see it. 10 minutes later, back on an open road, it's still there, seemingly lighting up the night sky where it's flashing. This completely freaks me out and even my parents noticed it. It seemed to get closer 5 minutes later and my dad turns toward it, opposite of where our destination was, but he was intrigued by it himself. It seems to go away. Scared by my dad's willingness to pursue it? I have no idea. To this day I have no idea what it might have been. I'll never forget it though. I always look to see if I can find it again, half of me wants to see it, half of me doesn't. It's probably going to get buried at this point, but this happened about three years ago. I went to a residential high school with people from all over my state. Over the summer, my two best friends, let's call them Dan and Ken, and I decided to get together at Ken's house. He lived pretty far away, three hour drive or so, so we decided to stay there a few days to make the most of the time. As it turns out, Ken regularly helps his local church by going in and cleaning up after service, not sure if it was after mass or a youth group or what, so Dan and I agree to help, as it falls on a night we're there. Ken had told me a story in the past about this church being haunted. I'm a bit skeptical, but he tells me there's a staircase to the basement to the right of the front door and he heard children playing on the stairs one day. The kicker is, he was the only person in the building and had personally unlocked the door when he entered. He followed the sounds and there was no one there. As I said, I was a bit skeptical about the truth of the story, but it was entertaining nonetheless. By the time we got to the church to clean, it was dark but not too late in the evening. My friend unlocks the door and shows me and Dan the staircase in question. Ken goes off to the chapel to clean and Dan and I decided to take a look. We went down the stairs and hit a light switch that illuminated the hall in the basement. Seeing nothing interesting, I turned the light off and headed back up with Dan. Here comes the weird part. We head back upstairs and hang out in the entryway for a few minutes before Ken comes back from cleaning. He looks at the staircase then at me and says, Yo Max underscore two steppin, do you mind turning off the basement light? I turn and sure enough you can see the light shining up from the basement. I definitely, 100%, 
Zero doubt anywhere turned off that light the first time. I've never been more sure of anything in my life. So naturally I walked downstairs, turned off the switch, and sprinted like hell back up the stairs. I don't think I've ever wanted to leave some place that badly. Okay, without giving specifics, this is by far the creepiest thing that I has happened to me. So I moved to this new place about five years ago to pursue better career prospects. While here, I began dating a colleague of mine. However, we were both living as paying guests in different houses at the time and were not allowed to visit each other according to house rules. So we pretty much spent all evening after work outside and only turned up to our rooms to sleep, wash. So the room I stayed it was located in this old apartment complex outside a local train station. The elevator opened onto the 6th and 9th floors only. All other floors were accessible only by stairs. My room was located on the 7th floor so I had to take the elevator to the 6th floor and then climb up the stairwell. It was very late around 2 am, and after our usual nightly walks, my boyfriend dropped me off close to the building and headed off to his room. As I began to walk towards the lift landing, I had this eerie feeling of being followed. So I picked up the pace and caught the elevator going up and when I turned around just as the doors closed, I noticed there was no one there. When the doors opened onto the 6th floor, I was still very scared and anxious and could not shake off the eerie feeling. So I ran up the stairs and opened the door of the apartment. I was then renting the room from an old woman and her daughter who lived there. It was a two-bedroom apartment, and the daughter liked to turn on the aircon quite high so the old lady slept in the hall. So when I opened the door that night and I found the old woman asleep in the hall as usual. I quickly locked up and went to my room and thought nothing of it till the next morning. It was around 7 am when I woke up to get some water. When returning to the room I noticed a broom placed across the front door. Again, I thought nothing of it and went back to my room. When I finally got back out, the old lady was sitting on the couch, and she asked me what time I got in the previous night. I said it was late around 2 am. She said she had dreamed that there was someone following me very closely and wanting to get into the house. And so she had placed the broom at the front door to prevent that person from entering. We used to go camping with a group of families in our 4 WDS once a year. This particular year, we toured through the Flinders Ranges in South Australia. We would usually drive all day, find a camp spot, camp for a night or two, and then move on. One of the days, we find ourselves driving through abandoned towns. Nothing significant, just a pub and a couple of houses, and then dirt road again. We drive through a few of these towns, each spaced maybe a few dozen kilometers apart, until we reach the end of the road at another abandoned town. It's later in the evening, so we set up camp in the rundown caravan park. We're the only people for miles. Us kids decided to go out exploring, and the first stop was the pub. There was myself, my brother, sister, two other girls who were sisters, and a Japanese exchange student who was staying with the two girls' family. The pub was on the corner of the road and looked like your stereotypical outback pub, except it was dead. There was a cellar door that lead below the pub and wasn't hindered by any locks or anything. We kept egging each other on, but we were all a bit too scared to go in. So we start heading back towards the caravan park. We get about 100 meters down the road and then notice this hole in the middle of this dirt road, maybe 15 cms in diameter. We all got curious and started putting things down it. Behind us was a pile of junk, and there was a wooden stake, maybe 1.5 meters in length. That went straight down the hole with no noise following it. We got more curious. We headed back to camp to grab some shovels to dig the hole out to see what it was. We spent the hour or so digging out this hole and sticking torches into it. By the time the sun had set, most of the others had gone back to camp and suddenly it was just myself and the Japanese exchange student. We had dug out the hole enough to make out some of the features inside of it. It looked to be some sort of mine shaft. There were wooden supports and it was about 3 meters deep. We keep digging. A few moments go by and we hear footsteps, the crunch of dirt under the foot. The weird part was that they were coming from ahead of us, but our camp was behind us. We shine the torch up and all we saw ahead of us, about 100 meters was this shadowy figure walk and disappear behind this abandoned pub. Suffice to say, we picked up a piss bolted back to camp and to find everyone there. Did not sleep well in the tent that night, that's for sure. When I was in 8th grade I was on independent study. It was like homeschooling in a sense, but I basically went to a teacher once a week and they gave me assignments and collected my work. Anyway, on with the story. It was just me and my dog Seamus in my room upstairs. I had been silently doing work for a few hours. I noticed that the screen on my computer next to me randomly went fuzzy and started glitching. Then Seamus ears perked up and he stared at my door for a while. 
My ears started crackling because of how weird and uneasy I felt. Then, the door in the room next to mine slammed shut. I left my room to find that no windows were open, there was no way that it could have shut that hard. I knew shit was wrong then. So I picked up Seamus and ran downstairs to the front door. I opened the door and I shit you not, as soon as I opened the door I felt a strong pressure on my back push me outside and the door slammed shut behind me. Once I got myself up and made sure Seamus was okay, it started pouring down raining. There was a lot of shit that happened in that house, mostly creepy and non-confrontational, especially compared to this story. But the previous owner had died in the house about a year before my dad bought it. The most notable one that I have posted about before, and which I'll try and shorten, was when I was first old enough to be home alone after school without a babysitter. Both my parents worked office hours and were not home until 6 p.m. They were insistent I lock all the doors and windows until their return and not to open to strangers etc. This included putting the bolts across on the front door. It wasn't a dangerous area at all but bless them they worried. It was a sunny summer's afternoon after school, and I was upstairs playing with my Lego. The house is quiet and no one is home. Now when you live in a house for a time, you get to know all its sounds. Our front door was wooden framed with two single glazed panels with a frosted pattern. It made a very distinctive noise opening and closing. And that is was what I heard. Clear as day. No mistaking it. The opening sound, a pause, and then the closing sound. It was even accompanied by the subtle percussive rumble through the house that you could feel in the floor if you were upstairs. It was so natural I just assumed mom or dad was home early, and I went downstairs to greet them. But on one was there. And then the penny drops about the bolts. They were still across. It was impossible to enter even if you had the key. Getting slightly concerned, I explore the rest of the house and confirm that no one else is home, the back door is also still locked, and none of the windows were open. I stand there in the hallway for a spell, confusion giving way to fear. Had I imagined it? No. It was too clear. The opening sound had caused me to stop what I was doing, so I was still and quiet for the closing sound. I had felt the door close too. Unable to compute, I booked it out of there on my Raleigh chopper over to a friend's house. He thought I was making it up and took the piss. I never had the door thing happen again, but a while after that I came down from my bedroom and walked into the kitchen. Again I was home alone. As I walk into the kitchen I see the kettle just finish boiling and click off. Steam coming out of the top, bubbling noises etc. It was not like my current kettle, which can be accidentally turned on by nudging the button on the base. It had quite a stiff rocker switch on the top. Besides, I had just been upstairs for a lot longer than it takes a kettle to boil. I was too young to even be interested in coffee or tea so I never touched the kettle unless my parents asked me to make them a coffee. Nothing could have fallen on top of it, and there was nothing out of place. Again I stood there trying to come up with an explanation. My mind immediately races back to the front door situation. I get a massive chill down my spine, and again I nope out of there. About 10 years ago, I was at a relative's house, a cottage in a small Michigan coastal town, for my summer vacation. She was almost completely deaf, without hearing aids she was completely deaf. Because of her impairment, she had a security system that flashed lights and called her home phone, which also had a light, in addition to a sound alarm. This is important later. I had gone out to see the 4th of July carnival and arrived home at 11 o'clock. My relative went to sleep at 8 o'clock every night at the latest. When I came in, I turned off the alarm, essentially signed myself in, and turned it back on again, like I did every time I came home late. I poured myself a glass of water and walked upstairs. Now, upstairs there was a long hallway. At the end of it was the door to a patio overlooking the backyard. We never used it because it wasn't up to code, the house was built in the late 1800s, and many aspects weren't worth the money it would cost to fix them. So there was a decorative antique chair that was propped against the door to the back patio. When I walked in that night, the chair was propped against my bedroom door instead, leaned underneath the doorknob as if to keep someone from exiting. I bolted for my relative's room to find her fast asleep. Her guard dog was also asleep. I woke my relative up and she put in her hearing aids. She called the alarm company and they had no record of anything besides her setting the alarm at 6.30 and my entrance at 11 o'clock. They called the police anyway. When the cops arrived, they moved the chair and attempted to open my bedroom door. It was locked. The doorknob was original to the house, and there was no key for it. So the cops and I walked out on the front balcony and used my key to open the sliding doors. Everything was as it should have been, and when we opened the door from the inside, it wasn't even locked. The cops searched the entire house and found nobody, and nothing was missing. 
I have no idea why there was a chair barricading my bedroom door, and why it appeared locked when the lock wasn't even turned. The police sent for a fingerprinting kit and they found no fingerprints on the chair, not even my relatives. Nobody knew why. I had trouble sleeping in that room after that. The police kept an undercover cop outside for a week since my relative was a beloved member of the community. Nothing fishy happened. We're typically not a believing family and this is the only experience I'm aware of. This was 15 to 20 years ago when I was about 10. We lived in a double wide trailer on my parents' farm. It was a relatively new farm and trailer, no deaths in them. My room was on one end of the trailer and parents on the other. The computer office was right next to my room. It had a crappy desk chair that squeaked slash creaked a lot when you sat down in it. One night I woke up and heard the chair creak and squeak. It was an extremely recognizable and distinct sound. I thought my dad was up checking the weather radar as farmers like to do. I get out of bed, walk five feet down the hallway to the office and am greeted by an empty chair and office. Five seconds later I see my dad coming from his end of the house. He asked what I was doing on the computer, I said I had just woken up and heard the chair creaking and I thought it was him. He had heard the chair creaking too, as if someone had been sitting down and moving around in it. We both said weird and went back to bed. We both still remember that night, it gets brought up from time to time. There is no explanation for what happened that night. Brother and mom were sleeping, no pets in the house. This happened about six years ago. A couple friends and I have decided to go out into the woods and build a base camp. We brought axes, machetes, fuel and a tent. We walked deep into the woods and spent all day cutting down trees and building a makeshift fence. Being idiots as it became dark we realized we had no way to see. We started a fire and I realized if we pour some fuel into a small can we can light the fumes at the top and create a torch. We made several torches and placed them in the surrounding woods. It got very dark we needed more logs for the fire so I was out about 20 meters from our camp I could hear my friends talking. I was swinging at the tree when I felt something hit my back. I froze and turned out around staring into the dark forest right at the edge of lights from our torches. I saw nothing and I assumed something had fallen off the tree and hit my shoulder. Right as I was about to swing something hits me in the back of the head and it hurt enough to make me swing around again. I saw a rock at my feet and I was terrified now. Turning back to walk towards camp I could hear my friends and see the light from the fire I kept turning my head looking into the darkness about halfway to camp a rock flew by me, missing my head by inches. I ran back to camp and told everyone and they saw the terror in my face. We sat for a while before more rocks came, we couldn't see anyone or anything just rocks flying into camp. Needless to say we didn't sleep, just chilled in the tent holding machetes and keeping a big fire. There were so many rocks in the morning, the thought still terrifies me. We were deep in the woods no one else should have been out there, I want to say it was a person but we didn't hear anything or see anything. Just so many rocks. The one thing I have never been able to explain. Well, not the only one, but the one that bothers me the most. I was at a Halloween party at my friend's house which was located on a huge property in the middle of the woods. She lived up near Whiskey Town, so mountains, a lot of trees and fields. Had a couple horses. I arrived that night, there was a gathering of people, maybe 10 at most. We were just talking, mostly outside on the patio. Other than her patio lights it was dark as fuck beyond the moonlight and stars. One second I'm talking to three of the people there on the patio, the next second, literally in a blink of an eye, I awake in a field about a couple miles away from her house. Just open my eyes and I'm on my back, in a field, staring at the stars. I stood up and could see her house in the distance. I started calling out hello, but no one was around. I walked at a brisk pace back to her place, was walking around, everyone was gone. The lights were all on, but no one was there, I even called out my friend's name outside but no response. I slip back into the house through the sliding glass door, still in calling out, she stumbles out of her room. Tells me everyone went home, and she is asleep with her boyfriend in her room, but I'm welcome to crash on her couch. I just sat down, dumbfounded, and kept asking her when everyone left? What was going on? She seemed to have no idea what I was talking about, and then I realized the sun was coming up and before that it was around 11pm at night, and now it was 5 or 6. I have never been able to put together what happened, where all those hours went, and how I ended up so far away in a field. I hadn't done any drugs and maybe just a couple beers. One night at my family's cabin in West Virginia, my brother and I were sleeping on the porch. From the beds we were in you could see the rocks on the top of the mountain. There appeared to be somebody on top of the mountain shining a light or a signal mirror down at the valley we were in and it stopped right on my brother and I. 
We could hear from all the way in our beds, that somebody on the top of the mountain was making a hoot or a fake owl call. Meanwhile on the gravel road leading up to the house, we could hear footsteps. We ran inside and our parents told us to sleep inside but that they didn't think anything of it. They thought we were just being kids. The next morning they asked us why we were walking around outside and when we said that we didn't go outside they looked worried and said that they also heard footsteps outside. When I was in middle school, I was a latchkey kid. Working parents, only child, middle class house in the suburbs. About as white bread as you could get. Anyway, this one week in the spring, I suddenly and inexplicably got terrified of the basement. I had no idea why, and it wasn't like I was normally scared of these things. But, like three to four days go by and I'm constantly freaked out because of the basement. It started affecting my sleep. I'd have nightmares, and when I came home from school, I'd pretty much hide on the opposite side of the house, and when I had to go near the cellar door, I'd sprint. Then one night around supper time, my mom asked me to go down to the cellar and grab some potatoes or onions or something, I don't remember what. And I hesitated, and my parents saw me hesitate, and they asked what was wrong. So I sort of confessed that I'd been having creepy dreams about the basement. My parents basically said, sure, son. We totally understand, but I could tell they were kind of rolling their eyes. So I sacked up and opened the door. And sitting right on the top step was this huge black cat, staring at me. I fucking lost it. Shrieked and slammed the door closed, heart hammering from adrenaline. Turns out, my parents had been gardening the weekend before and had left the cellar bulkhead open, leading to an inquisitive neighborhood cat getting stuck down there for like four days. Somewhere early on, I'd subconsciously noticed something was wrong, but I had no idea what, which led to me slowly losing my shit. Even though I know now it was just a cat, I still get chills thinking about how freaked out I was for those couple days. When I was in high school I had a teacher who wrote short stories. One in particular was especially freaky and I asked him where he got the inspiration from. Turns out it was based on something that happened to him a few years earlier. He's sitting home late one night when he hears several people banging on his door. He opens it and finds several boys from the football team begging to come in. They were all extremely frightened and some of them close to tears or crying. They said they had been driving down the road when their car died. Now we live in rural Idaho, and this was before cell phones. They thought they were lucky because the car died right in front of the only store in miles. The store was closed but there was a payphone. The phone is right next to the road. As they approach, the phone starts ringing. Confused, one of them decided to answer it. The voice that came through the phone was audible to all the boys. The voice started by saying he was the devil and that he stopped their car. My memory's a little hazy on what else he said. But next he tells them to turn around. They do and see a man standing on the opposite side of the road. They said they could see red eyes but the rest of his figure was black. The man starts walking towards them across the road. At this point they were basically all shitting themselves and were apparently too scared to run. Not like there was anywhere to go, they were miles from the next town. As the man reached the middle of the road a semi-truck approached. The truck driver slammed on his brakes and swerved trying to avoid him. The semi went right through him. After the semi had passed he was gone, vanished. No body or any sign of an impact. At that moment their car started. They jumped in and that's when they drove to my teacher's house. My teacher is a religious man and I guess that's why they chose to run to him. My teacher was pretty skeptical of the whole thing and decided to go to the spot where it happened the next day. He saw the big skid marks from a semi slamming on its brakes. He also said the spot just felt weird. So he decided to turn it into a story. After he told me that I never stopped at that store ever again.